Hi, today again we, um, we are on team management. Uh, we're going to look at another style of leadership we call situational leadership style. Uh, this kind of leadership style actually can be used in any project because as it suggests you can or you will change the style of leadership through different phases of the, uh, the team work and team development. Uh, it encourages uh, you as a, as a team leader, uh, the situational leadership uh, suggests that you would look at your team members, you look at the uh, other variables, being the task, the environment, the office space, the resources available and you choose what style to use at that given time and you evolve it as you go forward. Now, the sixth style within the situation of leadership, which Daniel uh, Goldman suggested, he defined it, is start with coaching leaders, uh, as it suggests, these kind of leaders which work with their team, they coach them, and they build their skills and they develop the team members into their uh, task and job they have to do. Then you got the pace setting leaders, these pace setting leaders are the ones which they time it, they break down the project into sections which can be delivered and uh, give it to the team to work it. A, sort of a, this, this style works best with the self-starters, so if your team are highly motivated and high initiative and they can get on with it, so you just need to pace them and get them through the, uh, the job. Now, then you've got the democratic leaders. These democratic leaders, as we discussed earlier on, uh, they give the followers a vote in almost every decision. The input comes in and the optimal uh, decision would be taken. Uh, it, it can build flexibility and responsibility within the group. Then you've got the affiliative leaders. The affiliative leaders uh, put their employees first. They look at their sort of well-being as well. They, this is used when you got a very, uh, the morale is low and the situation is uh, not very good, is a helpless situation and you are going to rebuild uh, a team which is not effective really. Uh, the next two is what is the authoritarian leader, these are authoritarian sort of thing is the, there, there are to good in analyzing the problems and identifying challenges and go for a head-on solution to it and get the team back together. Uh, this is good for teams which have been drifting because the project has been going for too long. It's getting it, getting them back into shape. Then is a correct, correct the coercive uh, leaders. Uh, these kind of leaders they tell the subordinates what to do. And they have a very clear vision what they want, um, what's the end game and how to reach it and they get everybody to say follow me and you know, uh, it works in a number of situations as well. Now the situation leadership according to Blanchard and Heresy is slightly different. Uh, the, 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 their model is uh, based on two concepts of leadership itself and a development level of the followers, the team. So your leadership and the team development somehow they, they have to be matched together and brought together. So the, the first style they have it's, it's a telling leaders, it's the S1 style one, uh, which they uh, provide uh, very specific guidance, they supervise close supervision they help the team to get there, they uh, good communicators, uh, they create roles and objectives for team members to move them forward and they are with them. Next uh, style, second style is selling style. Uh, they explain and they persuade the team that follow, uh, my, follow the objective and the roles and they create the roles. They are more interactive. They, they are more suggestive with the team, so they bring them on board. Uh, remember that we do all these styles within different 
stages of a life of a project or a, a team formation. Uh, participating in style, as it suggests, is a sharing and facilitating uh, with these kind of lead leaders or leadership would lead decisions to their followers. Uh, you use this when you, the team has reached its really the level of competence which they can do it and you can really uh, leave it to them to do it. And the final stage is a delegation, is delegating style which you give the job to people and the responsibility and authority and say get on with it and you provide a minimum guidance and you let the work to, to flow and obviously it's a high competence level we have reached there. Now within this uh, style of leadership. Also we have what the stage of an employee development or a team member development. So they got the four stages of that is called from R1 to R4. So R1 is a low competence, high commitment. That means you've got a team member, doesn't know much or hasn't got very uh, long-term experience of what they want to do, but they're really committed. Now at this stage of the development of the team member, S1 works, that's you know, you are guiding them, is a selling situation, uh, telling situation, sorry, telling leadership, which you are there, you explain it to them, you coach them, you, you know, obviously the competence level is low. Then the other type is the R2, which is, they have got some competence, but the commitment is low. So the selling system work, you engage them, you you know, excite them, to bring them into the program, to build the commitment higher. Then you go to high competence, they know their job, but variable commitment, they are not really full-hearted into that project. Then is a participating style, that you work with them. You can't just leave it to them because they are drifting a bit, but you work with them. So the S3, the style of participating works. And the best situation is, uh, R4, which is a later, uh, later part of the stage of team development, which got a high competence and high commitment. That's where you've got the highest productivity. You really can delegate the work to your team and let them to get on with it and finish the job. So, uh, as you can see, we are changing. This is suggesting as the team is evolving and developing, and team members are becoming more competent and committed, you can let the your leadership style to go to from a very close relationship to delegation, just supervision, and let them to get on with the work and just follow. You, you, you will be concerned with the timeline and other facilitating resources for them. Now, characteristic of uh, leadership, we looked at this, uh, so you can look at the notes. Uh, these kind of leaders, obviously, you. you have got, you have to have a good insight, you have to be flexible, you have to not only trust your team, you have to be trustworthy yourself. You know, your word is, you don't go back on your word, you try to deliver on what you promises. You are a good problem solver and also you are a good coach because you are coaching your team to get there. So these are the things which you have to work on it if you haven't got it. Uh, looking at pros and cons of this uh, type of leadership, uh, the, the positive part is easy to use when you know these times, when you obviously you have to study these things. Uh, it's simple to use, it, not complicated. Um, actually, if you look at the, uh, that graph of how the team development and building works, it, you can see actually it follows the same from a style 1 to style 4 when you bring it in. Uh, you have to be a flexible person, you have to have a good intuition, uh, good communicator, uh, all those things we need to have a good leader goes with it. Uh, they will help this kind of leadership. But the, the only thing in which we can say disadvantage or comes about this is th this type of uh, leadership is really designed for North America and some of the, I mean, a lot of developed, I mean, developed countries uh, not necessarily work in all cultures. 
it also ignores between male and female behavior uh, and it needs uh, it just uh, treat everybody the same which is not necessarily the, the right way of doing it uh, the situation they can, they can divert attention away from a long-term strategy they, they can be so involved with the current job and what they're doing they may just uh, forget about the bigger picture for the company what is uh, you know the overall objective of the company. But just finishing this part now, what's the best type style of leadership which you can use? Is actually the answer is there is no best. The best is what is the best for that job in hand. The team, the tasks, the complications, it will dictate what's the best way of uh, leadership which would deliver the, the goals and objectives of the company or the team. Uh, now, the last word is you have to learn different leadership. You cannot say, this is my style, then you would be out of job very quickly. Different jobs require different style and even in the same job, the team at different stages would require you to change your style as you move on, as your team become more competent, more reliable, more committed, you can ease up and stand back. You have to stand back and let the team deliver. I think that's the end of this talk. There's a lot more notes about it on the course itself. So I leave that for you to read more if you want. And I will see you on the next talk. Bye.